Welcome to Become Famous Podcast, the ultimate destination for achieving fame in your industry. Join us for discussions as we uncover the strategies and secrets to becoming known, navigating cancel culture, and staying authentic. Stay tuned because here at Become Famous, the journey to fame begins now. Welcome to Become Famous Podcast. I'm really excited to have Professor Oskar Altman, who has uh, written one of my favorite leadership books. And I was doing it because I'm doing some reviews, and it's called Control Alt Delete Resetting Leadership. And、uh, it was why do I like it so much? Well, I liked it because. I'm a left-brain person, and I've worked with scientists and engineers. And how do you get them to understand the importance of leadership, more the intangible parts of life? And what I thought you did so well was you were able to bring it to the left-brain people, almost like a checklist, a way to look at leadership in a very, very great way for a rational thinker. So welcome. Thank you very much, Donald.、Uh, I'm glad to be here.、Uh... Uh, to be here, and, and as you said, like the, the naming was、uh, quite uh, intensive. Uh, I, I would say I was inspired by this、uh, famous keyboard、uh, shortcut, Control Alt Delete, used in com-、uh, computing to、uh, to reboot a system, and I just wanted the the title to symbolize a, a fresh start and, and a new approach to、uh, to leadership. I love that fresh start.、Um, what made you write this? And tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you are in the Netherlands, am I correct? That's correct. I, I was born. That's also correct. I, I was born and raised in Istanbul. Okay. You know,、uh, a city rich in、uh, history、uh, and culture,、uh, and growing up in in such a vibrant、uh, vibrant environment,、uh, and then I followed significant life experiences in different parts of the world. A、uh, couple of years in Dubai,、uh, and then、uh, here in the Netherlands. I think. Like having visited all these places and and living there helped me bring a unique global perspective to everything I do. It's not only the, the book I have written,、uh, but also、uh, all the other professional and personal aspects. I was constantly surrounded by diverse perspectives and people and ideas.、Uh, I think they shaped my、uh, worldview and、uh, gave me this deep curiosity about how things work. Uh, that's uh, that's something、yeah, I, I would say quite uh, impactful uh, on this uh, book uh, book journey. And outside of work, I have a deep a deep passion for the automotive world. I particularly、uh, in love with modifying and driving modern classic cars. It it kind of reflects my love for innovation and reimagining possibilities. Let's put it uh, uh, that way. Uh, this is what I'm.、Uh, I've been doing、uh, when I'm not working or not writing. Enjoy spending time on on automotive roads. But it's so great because you、um, you really have、uh, found a way to communicate leadership for someone that's more rational minded, that's a science minded. Because I worked a lot with scientists, engineers, and communicating to them, I always use NASA. NASA and said,、mm-hmm. if NASA communicates this way, let's figure out a way. Like I would always use them as the pedestal. If they can do it, we can do it, right? And and I think、uh, the control alt delete really speaks to that scientific minded person. And what did you feel compelled to write this book? What did you see that was different that needed your book? Because I do believe your book is really needed. Yeah.、Uh... To be honest, my interest in writing this book was、uh, sparked by、uh, my passion for sharing knowledge and insights、uh, gained throughout my experiences in the tech industry.、Uh, it's now over、uh, nearly two decades of、uh, working in various roles, starting、uh, as a hands-on engineer to more、uh, senior management positions. I think I encountered numerous challenges and learned valuable、uh, lessons there.、Uh, and one of the things I realized that. Many of these、uh, experiences I have been、uh, going through could benefit others, especially those navigating the、um, the complexities of leadership in the tech industry.、Uh, I think writing became kind of a way for me to、uh, to reflect on these experiences, share my practical advice, and and inspire inspire others to、uh, to pursue their leadership journeys with more confidence, more resilience. That was the.、Uh, The aha、uh, moments、uh, or the sparkle uh, uh, 
actually to uh, for for my interest in in writing this book. So what what is it that you want the the scientists, the programmers, the rationalists? That uh, what do you want them to take away that you really think is important for that group of people? Yeah, I, I hope readers take away several key messages uh, f- from my book. I think the the very first thing is uh, to understand the, that the leadership is is a journey. It's not about having all the answers or being a natural born leader, which I challenge uh, in my book. It's more about continuous growth learning from different experiences and adapting to uh, uh, to new challenges that's that's for sure uh, maybe the second thing is more like embracing your unique leadership style uh, i think effective leadership comes from being authentic and leveraging more your more of your unique strengths rather than trying to fit in a, a one size fits all approach uh, which is usually uh, characterized uh, in in the industry i would say so i i would love to people understand that being authentic is is more important than trying to fit that uh, norms that's another uh, uh, key takeaway uh, also a successful leader i think is someone who creates this environment who encourages uh, creativity and, and and values diverse perspectives in my book i i usually uh, I, I try to emphasize more than once that uh, innovation thrives in inclusive and collaborative cultures, uh, and that's what a leader sh- uh, should uh, should promote, for sure. That's another uh, another aspect or, or a key takeaway. Uh, and maybe maybe the last I can say, uh, of course not the least, like a, a leader's role is also uh, to promote or maintain a healthy work-life balance and build uh, resilience. I think these are crucial for sustainable uh, leadership. Leaders must take care of themselves to effectively lead uh, uh, lead others. I think through these uh, these teams, I try to aim to empower readers to develop their own capabilities and inspire them again to lead uh, more with uh, confidence, empathy, and a little bit more forward-thinking uh, mindset. But you know what I think is so interesting in what you're saying is um, authenticity. How do you define authenticity and how do you find yeah, – define authenticity first. Yeah, I think I would define authenticity as to, as to being on, your, uh, on yourself uh, instead of trying to mimic uh, some others or uh, uh, some, some other type of uh, behaviors or, or basically behaving as, uh, as, as of your personal values. Uh, that's being authentic. Uh, and I, I believe like being authentic helps a lot, opens a lot of doors. Uh, in, 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 and not, not only like uh, also as, as, a, as a leader, but also uh, as a person in your, in your per, uh, personal life. Yeah, this is, I think, how I would uh, uh, describe uh, what being an authentic person or authentic leader is. Hmm. So if you're looking at, I think one of the challenges of being authentic in corporate world or in in that sphere that you're talking about is everyone has an expectation of what you're going to be. And I know a lot of times when I was using um, like the moon landing or some of these crazy ideas I had, like you scientists are like the Jason Bourne. (laughs) I was like trying to create this excitement. They're looking at me like, who is this person? Right. And then they had to get used to me. And I think there is that ramp up of getting used to your unique leadership. How do you navigate that in the umbrella of a corporate culture? Yeah, I think the very first thing you uh, you should do is to establish rapport and, and trust. Uh, even I think before being uh, fully authentic to yourself and to others in, in the corporate setting, I would say like building this trust uh, with your superiors or with your peers is the, is the very first thing. That's kind of a foundation. Uh, once the trust is established, uh, once people start to, uh, to, to, to basically trust each other, then I think authenticity uh, would really help to, for, your, for, uh, for navigating your own, own path. But without uh, uh, having these meaningful connections, uh, understanding each other, building this, uh, that's a significant relationship and, and trust, with uh, with the people who are working uh, who are who you are working with, 
it's also going to be very hard uh, to be uh, to be authentic, I would say. So let me ask you this then. So if you come in as a new person uh, leading a team, how do you um, follow and build the trust and then be authentic? And do you have to build trust first and authenticity? Because uh, you know, like how everyone locks, oh, this is the new guy. This is the new lady. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're kind of like this, mm, right? And then you have to build that trust. But at the same time, you don't want to com compromise yourself. And what have you found works? Uh, I, I think uh, in, in this kind of an occasion, uh, being authentic and, and trying to build the trust also goes hand in hand. Like if I join a new organization today uh, as, as a manager, uh, I think the, the very first thing I would do is to simply observe and listen to people uh, for quite some time. So usually I think the, the, the biggest mistake of, of the senior leaders uh, is they have a lot of answers uh, and they are in a mindset uh, of having all the answers and knowing all the, all the ticks. Uh, however, the, the, the challenge is, I think what people and the organization expects from you is, is to first listen, uh, observe what the challenges are, what, what uh, the, the biggest issues of, of the people are, uh, uh, try to make meaningful connections, spend some time with them again and that comes to this situational leadership uh, approach, uh, I would say, uh, because every people has a different, uh, let's say, motive. Uh, and, and you need to understand what, what motivates uh, people to, to open up themselves uh, to you. Uh, and that requires spending uh, some time with them. And everyone has different uh, communication styles. For example, some people might prefer uh, written communication, some others more face-to-face -face or uh, over tools like... Uh, uh, the video call uh, communication tools like we are using nowadays, Zoom, etc. Uh, and uh, once you identify uh, the needs of these people, I think then it's it's going to be easier. Uh, then you will uh, you will uh, you will eventually become more genuine, become more authentic, open up yourself, uh, and they will also understand that this new guy uh, in the in the room is authentic. Is open to listen to them, open to their challenges, trying to help sort out their their problems. Um, that's interesting. Um, like with you, what would you? Um, I, I liked when you said situational leadership, and uh, I don't know if you want to tell a little bit about that because I really like that component. Um, but it's yeah, if you could do that, that'd be great. Yeah, when I uh, when I say situational leadership, what I'm uh, what I'm referring to is uh, basically a, a leader uh, or or anyone I, I believe should uh, uh, should not fit or should not have a, a, a one approach that will try to fit in every single situation in every single organization. Uh, for example, if you uh, as a leader in the tech industry, when you work uh, with uh, with a junior engineer the approach that you need to take should be more kind of uh, a mentor position uh, so that you try to help that that individual uh, to understand the context and, and try to, to shift or, or guide, uh, guide that engineer. However, uh, your style should be adapted if you are working with someone, let's say, with 30 years of experience in the same domain. So most likely that people will, uh, will require more room, uh, more bandwidth from you. And only maybe need intervention uh, when he or she faces problems. That also applies for different countries, different cultures. Uh, that is what uh, situational leadership is about. So it's, it, it's basically saying there is no one size fits all approach to leadership. And based on the situation and, uh, and the needs of your followers, uh, you need to adapt your style. Mm, I really like that. And um, I would love to go back to um, your title, Control, Alt, Delete, Resetting yeah. Leadership. What are some of the bad habits that we have and what is it that we need to reset? Yeah, there are a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what made you write the book? Was there this one thing that just said, like what, when you write a book, there's a reason why you're writing a book. You're not just writing a True. book for fun. Believe me, I've written a book and it's not always fun. You're like in the value, you're like, you have to have a strong why to finish that book, right? So there was a why in you 
of saying resetting and control alt delete what was that one moment or were there moments that really made you realize that we really need to do a control alt delete on the way we look at leadership yeah that's uh, that's a great question i think the decision uh, to to write this book uh, particularly uh, and giving the, this name control alt lead uh, it was not a single moment but a, a gradual realization uh, in which i i thought i had valuable stories and insights to share uh, I can say a, a pivotal moment was during uh, my time in, in one of my former organizations. I was uh, uh, frequently asked for advice on uh, on leadership and, and managing software uh, software teams, and I noticed recurring themes and myths that many professionals uh, faced, uh, including my own uh, myself, including my peers, and my own managers. And, and this recognition. Uh, combined with the encouragement from uh, uh, from my colleagues and, and and mentors, I think they motivated me a lot to write uh, this book. And, and I simply wanted to provide a resource that could help others navigate this complex uh, landscape of uh, leadership uh, in, a, in a fun way. The book is written in, in, in a fable format, as you, as you know. Yeah, it's uh, two people are speaking to each other in each and every single chapter. Uh, one represents... Uh, uh, the, the chief technology officer of the organization, uh, the, the character represents the wisdom, the experience. The other one is is an engineer uh, who would whose asp aspiration is to be uh, a leader in, in the organization. And in, in every single chapter, they try to address one uh, uh, one leadership topic, and then we follow with uh, uh, key takeaways uh, from uh, global leaders, uh, and uh, and also I, I try to put some. Uh, I would say uh, notes that uh, re or reflection prompts. That's how I called it in the book, uh, so that when when people read it, uh, they might immediately turn the theory into practice by following these exercises and uh, uh, reflection prompts. Yeah, and what was the what was the advice that you got the most asked? What was the thing that they need that most people asked you about? Like, was there one topic that that this felt like would be repeating itself that you were giving advice on? I think over the years, what uh, what I heard a lot is that uh, there is a gap between uh, the theory uh, and the practical uh, reality. So if you look at in, in corporate worlds, again, uh, many people now in the uh, in the internet era uh, have the access to uh, to to the theoretical leadership concepts. And also the organizations encourage these trainings a lot. However, turning these uh, trainings into practical uh, behaviors is the challenge I believe many tech leaders uh, face. Uh, and that's what I was getting a lot uh, from, uh, from people. And my goal in this book was to bridge this gap, providing a practical, a relatable guide uh, based on real-world uh, experiences, and not only from me, but also from the uh, the industry giants like Google, Microsoft, uh, and, all, and all the others. So I wanted to basically offer a resource uh, that could help aspiring and, and current leaders navigate this uh, the challenges of this uh, leadership, and then uh, try to make this uh, this bridge uh, a, a reality. Yeah, no, I think you really did that well. Um, I really like the. Um the culture of flexibility. Uh, I w and I think that really comes into what you're talking about, listening, uh, really having a listening, observing, like you're talking beforehand. If you're going to build trust um, and you come in as a new leader, you're going to want to have more of the observing. And I think that's hard, at least here in the U.S., because we have this pressure of having a result in 90 days. We call it the 90 days. What are your yeah. first 90 days like, right? That's right. So uh, I, I think that's also a very typical interview question uh, for, for a managerial position uh, or, for, or even for any position that they ask. Uh, when, right. uh, what, what would you do in your uh, 30, 60 or, or, or 90 days or, right. or sequentially? Uh, I, I would say regardless of where you are in the world, the, the first 30 days should definitely go into this observation that I was referring earlier. So you need to understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, even if there is a, a, a fire to extinguish, you can't extinguish a fire 
uh, without understanding uh, the exact reason, uh, I would say. So I think the, the, the very first 30 days, I would, I would spend some time uh, to observe and, and listen and understand the challenge and the root cause and the problems, then gradually come up with a strategic plan get the buy-in of uh, the top management and, and peers and build on top of it. Of course, in the first 30 days, it's also building the, the trust that we mentioned and man or, or, or creating this kind of relationship uh, between uh, between the new environment and, and yourself. Uh, yeah, but even if you are in, in the United States, I think you should spend some quality time uh, in the very first uh, 30 days and build upon it, uh, it afterwards. But you know, that's hard. I remember taking a job in the Norwegian government and I felt all this pressure to perform right away. And you have all the mm -hmm. staff looking at you and, and it's hard to withstand not wanting to act when everyone's looking at you for the answer. If that, and, and then like having worked in a political campaign where time is not your friend, you have to go mm -hmm. straight into the fire and boom. And they're looking at you. Okay. So what would you do? <laughs> and how, and, and that's, that's a tough one. Yeah, it, for me, it's again, tough. Uh, it is tough, uh, for sure. Uh, and I think, again, the important thing is uh, being adaptable or mm -hmm. uh, situational uh, here. Uh, if the expectation is to extinguish the fire, uh, in, as you described, in, in 30 days, I think you need to uh, be aware of it before you join that uh, organization and you come well prepared with all your tools, whatever... Uh, whatever you need. Uh, it shouldn't be a, a big surprise to you in your first day that they need answers and they needed answers even yesterday. Uh, I think that's the, uh, uh, the, the, the first thing. So if you, if you know it already, if, if you know that that is the expectation from you, then you need to do your homework a little bit beforehand and, and come accordingly. Uh, but otherwise, in, in, in most of the cases, uh, I would say, especially in the technology industry, uh, acting immediately without having or passing through this observation phase and analysis phase usually uh, leads to catastrophic uh, solutions. And most often than not, that people have to leave the organization. But of course, in, in the example that you gave, like a political uh, uh, campaign, and you are in it because it, there's also a, a time box uh, associated with it, then that's another story. Then you need to do your uh, homework and come and execute uh, immediately. So I, again, it's being uh, situational. Situational. I think you're yeah. absolutely, I think you're absolutely right. And so what, I know this is kind of an elementary, but I think when you're at the control alt delete and the screen is completely blank, what is the value that you want to cultivate? And what are the first elements of trust that you want to put on that canvas? Well, that's. Uh, uh, I, I I think there's more than uh, uh, there's more than one. Okay, uh, that's I would great. Say. Uh, the the very first thing is I uh, I I think to uh, to be a leader, uh, the the first thing that the individuals need to understand is there is no such thing as born leader. There is a, a, a common mistake or myth. Uh, especially I think it's coming from, uh, again, the, the political uh, the context is that uh, leaders are usually born uh, and they're not grown. I think the very first thing people need to do is to, to demystify all these, uh, all these points, starting from uh, this born leader, uh, uh, this born leader myth. Uh, and then reflect on each and every uh, other other aspect of uh, leadership, I would say. So self-awareness is, is quite critical. Uh, understanding your own uh, leadership style, understanding your own strengths uh, is, is, is uh, I think, will definitely reinforce uh, the, your, uh, your, your leadership style. For sure, continuous learning. We are in the, in the, uh, in the technology era. There is no such thing as like the end of learning. So you should have an open mind on, on whatever you are working at, irrespective of the industry. You should have that uh, growth mindset and learning mindset. That's, uh, uh, that's another, uh, uh, another aspect. 
and for sure empathy and and, and resilience again uh, i think uh, one of the challenges of the organization's face is usually uh, especially for the managerial positions people are selected based on their performance in the individual contributor role uh, rather than their uh, potential as a, as a manager these are two different type of skill sets the hard skills whatever you are working as, as a hands on engineer accountant uh, a, a, a marketing uh, expert wh whatever you are uh, this has nothing to do with your management skills so one of the challenges that organizations face is that fully relying on that professional experience and the years uh, and not giving enough emphasis on on understanding that individuals uh, let's say eq uh, and and the leadership potential uh, as an individual i would encourage everyone uh, irrespective of their again position to uh, to work more on this uh, soft skill side because it's also harder to gain and it takes much more time uh, to to gain all these uh, all these skills so they should spend quite some time both on the hard skills and also uh, on on the soft skill side if they want to grow in their uh, uh, in their industry well uh, i am um, i think you're so right we we put so much on personal individual Oh, you've done so great. Let's just promote you, promote you. And, yeah. and there should almost be like an expertise promotion and then a managerial promotion. And it's almost like, how do you assess and find the ones that really have the potential for being manager? And what you're saying is, if I understand you correctly, it's really about understanding the soft skills. And how do we right. train people on the soft skills? Does it mean that we should do personality tests, psychology testing? So like if you've got two engineers and they're performing pretty much similar, how would you choose then and how would you find that? Is it through testing? Is it through in-depth interviews? Like what, what do you think? Yeah, there are a bunch of tools nowadays uh, in the uh, But what do you industry. like? What do you like? What, what do like? you do? What do you do? I mean, I want what you do. There's a lot of things out there, but but what do you do as a leader when you have two people? How do you select them? What is the main criteria? Uh, assuming the uh, the hard skills part are are more or less uh, equal, uh, I I would say I would try to understand uh, and ask the hypo hypothetical questions uh, that these individuals uh, should give me uh, let's say answers about how they approach a problem, how they approach uh, let's say a, a challenging stakeholder or or a challenging situation. How they handle the stress if they uh, uh, if they if they face it uh, quite intensely. I think that the, you get the cues uh, from uh, from these from the individuals when they uh, try to share their background about uh, these type of problems uh, or or the challenges they faced. Uh, that's how I usually uh, try to, to to understand and and identify during the during the interviews. There are also very nice uh, tools, uh, as you uh, as you mentioned in, at the beginning, uh, like some, uh, uh, let's say some some uh, some questionnaires that will give you a, a little bit more understanding about the psychological traits or or, or the leadership traits of or the potential uh, of that person. So I think having these, uh, it's, it's it's kind of a combined effort, like uh, from the. The, the quantitative side, I think you do these uh, type of tests, and then for the qualitative side, you uh, you more let's say have these conversations, in depth conversations during the interviews, uh, and share these case studies to to, to listen to, to individuals' answers, and then come to, to a conclusion by combining and or, and consolidating uh, uh, these two uh, two outcomes. That's how I uh, I usually do. Oh, that's great! Wow. So what's next for you? Are you writing another book or are you keep continuing teaching about this book? I think it's a, do you have a course on it or like, what are you, what are you doing with your book? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I just, I thought it was great. I thought it was a fantastic book. Really, really, really. Thank great. you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Really appreciate that. So yeah, uh, actually uh, what uh, I have some, uh, some ideas, uh, some, some plans uh, about, uh, about writing another book, 
uh, I have several projects in the pipeline and I'm considering uh, immediately uh, delving deeper into uh, specific leadership challenges, especially with the introduction of artificial intelligence. You know, given this uh, rapid evolution of uh, AI and its increasing impact on every facet of our lives, I nowadays I feel compelled to explore this intersection between artificial and leadership further. Uh, AI has become a buzzword. There is a lot of speculation about its implications uh, for the future, whether it's going to be positive or negative for uh, for humanity. And I plan to to delve into how AI is reshaping or is going to reshape the leadership landscape and the challenges it presents, and also the opportunities it it offers. So that is the uh, uh, the new project I have uh, in my mind. Uh, and also, additionally, I'm nowadays working on developing a series of uh, online courses, uh, mainly based on the concepts uh, from my book, which uh, is aimed at providing more uh, visual or more interactive uh, learning experience for uh, for aspiring leaders, and I'm going to hopefully announce it also uh, soon. Well, that's great. So we will be on the lookout for it. Um, the one thing I want to ask at the end of this interview, it's been great, uh, Really recommend you getting the book Control, Delete, Resetting Leadership. Definitely if you're in programming. I worked in computer developments, software development. I've worked with scientists and engineers, and I really felt like this is a real go-to for that group specifically because you're really able to hone in on the way they think, which I thought was really, really great. So the way we can find you is... Uh, we'll put on the show notes the places where we can find you, uh, which is definitely LinkedIn. I, I'm assuming you, you know, your website, where your book is. Uh, but for, as a last question, what do you want to become known for personally and professionally? Well, I think professionally, uh, the uh, the uh, being a, a, a thought leader uh, in in my own domain in the uh, let's say, uh, leadership around software engineering or, or technology in, in general. Uh, I think that's what uh, I, I would I would be aiming for. Uh, and to be honest, the book already has enhanced my credibility uh, as, as a thought leader here. It has opened up new opportunities, such as uh, this one with Uturant, and some speaking en- engagements, workshops, and, and collaborations with other organizations and, and, and professionals. Uh, and the, the positive feedback, from uh, from readers on on Amazon has also been incredibly rewarding, Mori, and, and and motivating me to to continue sharing my uh, insights and experiences. Uh, that's the professional uh, side, and and personally, I would say, again, as as one of my values, and and as I shared during the uh, during our conversation earlier today, I think I simply wanted to be a, a person seen as uh, someone who can be trusted and genuine and authentic. So that's uh, if people can feel it when when they read my book. I think that's uh, uh, that's more uh, more than enough. Uh, and it has been a, a journey on of growth and, and discovery for me, and it helped me to to connect with uh, a wider audience and contribute to to this ongoing conversation about effective uh, leadership. Uh, and hope it will uh, it will continue uh, in in this uh, in this path. Well, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, get your book. It's wonderful. And then uh, when you get your courses and stuff, you'll have to contact us so we can promote you because I think it's a very valuable uh, way of learning leadership for for the people in that field. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, for for this opportunity to, to share my journey and thoughts. And I'm excited about the future and the uh, continuous exploration of uh, leadership. Yes, thank you. Thank you for listening to Become Famous Podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, rate, and review our show. Your support helps us keep bringing you valuable insights on achieving fame in your industry. Keep shining and see you next time.